this is where the patron saint of Thessaloniki was murdered. Right here, what used to be the Roman baths. Today, we're going to learn. We're going to learn a little bit more about the Roman ruins, and then we're going to venture further into the center of the city in order to experience some food. I'm Ariel. This is Urbanist. Let me know where you are watching from, and let's get on with the show. We are again today in the city. There's a lot of things to see. And that's why we're mostly sticking to this area during the show. Also, the city is not that big. So there is not that much to go beyond the center and a few other neighborhoods. However, this is the center of a lot of Greek Orthodox traditions and history. And thus, I'm very excited to show you around these beautiful churches, especially this one, the Church of San Demetrius. It is one of the most important churches in Thessaloniki for the city and also a main pilgrimage site for many Christians. So, Kalispera everyone! Let me know where you're watching from. Hello Gabriel, hello Lucy from Greece, hello Raul, hello Action Show, Kalispera, hello Mater, hello everyone, nice to see you here. So we are... I want but why? Who is this Saint Demetrios? Well, Saint Demetrios was alive during the late 200s, early 300s. The Romans took over Thessaloniki. Emperor, Emperor Galerius was the one who ended up in the territories. Demetrios was a Roman soldier. However, he ended up learning the ways of St. Paul, who came here in 50 AD and started converting all these areas. And he was very fascinated by the Christian teachings. And to him, it seemed like the Roman beliefs were outdated. He would call them idolatrous. Thus, he decided to secretly convert into Christianity. Because if you convert into Christianity out loud, you could face very serious consequences. He knew firsthand because he was a Roman soldier and he knew what he would do to a Christian. Well, became a Christian secretly. And then his father, who was a commander also in the Roman army, told him, go to Thessaloniki, ordered him, go to Thessaloniki and kill the Christians. Clamp down on this Christian resurgence that's happened. At that time, they would know as Macedonia. Well, Demetrios had a dilemma. A, to go with the orders, abide by his oath in the Roman legion, or B, do the Christian thing and decide to go against those orders and not kill anyone. Well, he decided to go for option B. The Roman legion, of course, did not like this. So they imprisoned Demetrios and sentenced him to death. I'm telling you this story before we walk inside because I can't talk too much in the church, but we're gonna see imagery of all this that I'm talking about. At this time, 6 AD, these were Roman baths. I'm not entirely sure why they used this to imprison him, but they did nonetheless. And they decided to sentence him to death by spear. And thus he was murdered by a spear going right through the middle of his insides. Probably one of the most painful ways to die is digging a spear right through your intestines, letting them spill out. Saint Demetrius after that became the patron saint of Thessaloniki because he was martyred for the city. He was the protector of the city. And thus this became a pilgrimage site also for Christians. A lot of his relics were sent over to Italy, but they here. There were churches here for centuries because this is the holy site of Saint Demetrius. But in the great fire of 1917, which ravaged the city and destroyed most of the beautiful buildings that were here, 36% of the city was absolutely decimated. And then we have this church now today. Let's walk inside to the church of Saint Demetrius and see everything that I just talked about. I got to put on my mask. Of 
course the church is built in order to honor the the architecture of Byzantine, Byzantine architecture which is the main architecture that was used in the first initial churches in early Christianity because Christianity spread first into the Eastern Roman Empire and then to the Roman Empire St. Demetrius. These are the mortal remains of Saint Dimitri. Then died. Here he is being assassinated, murdered, death by spears, making him bleed out to death. A very slow way to die. Teresa, is this a coffin? Yes, it is. Saint ordered to be executed by the Emperor Galerius. some holy water. The Roman baths, the ruins, dating back to around the late 200s, early 300s. Justin, the name of the saint is Saint Demetrios. Uh, what's the English version? Demetrius. Demetrius. People, some people have that name. Demetrius. Dimitri. But in uh, Greek, they say Demetrius. a very sacred site yeah so these are the roman baths where they found his body of course we these ruins left but 
it's interesting to think that the Romans were here. You know, we usually associate Italy with these ancient Roman ruins. Here in Thessaloniki as well. Ronald says it makes you wonder what imprint you would have hundreds of years in the future. Linda says when you're coming back to New York City. Never, Linda. Staying in Europe. Would the English version be Dominic? Mm, good question. I don't think so. Would be the English version. Dimitri. Dominic. Hello, Mario. Welcome. Hola, bienvenidos. San Dimitri. No sé cómo se dice en español. Por Dimitri, maybe se dice en español. And St. Dimitri Church. Hope you stay in Europe forever. So despite this looking like a Byzantine, ancient Byzantine church, just did a really good job in paying homage. So much, Irene, Dimitri. Wow. Let's go back inside. Bad service here. Here are the crypts. The crypts is where most of the Roman baths were because a lot of the city was built on top. The modern city was built on top of the Roman city. This is a shrine to St. Anicia. She was born and lived in Thessaloniki during the reign of the great persecutor of Christians, Maximilian, the same time that St. Demetrius lived. She was the daughter and the devout of a very rich person, very rich parents. So here we have another saint. One day she was going to church and the Romans had a problem with her worshiping. She had a problem with the Romans worshiping the Roman idols. And she pressed the Roman soldier, why is he denying Christ? Why, why, why? And when he confronted her, she stood her faith, but the soldier decided to retaliate and lanced her, killing her. And she is another martyr. Here she is.
there's a big group. Maybe tourists. Wow, that's a big group. group yeah it is now we're back outside wow breathtaking breathtaking lovely church so this is now let's walk around this is mostly a wandering uh, official history tour so we don't have too much of an agenda I just have a slight idea of what a few things I want to show you I want to give a good a huge shout out to a content creator I met a blogger blogger with a B her name or her channel name is um urban wanders which is very funny because it's very similar to urbanist and i do wanderings so i met up with her and she gave me a lot of recommendations so give check her out urban wanders it's her her blog search her on google you'll see it or urban wanders on instagram and she gave me recommendations for what to eat in the city center which I'm going to show you at least a, a Slovakia and uh, hopefully a Bugatza as well. Hey, Brian from Colombia, bienvenidos. Ronald, como esta acá? Matt, thank you so much for the extra info. Kay says, Melissa sent 50 stars. Thank you so much, Melissa. Stars are double this month. I'm sorry, what year was the church quite a while to build it because I think they might have built in the classic Byzantine style not just in terms of its look but I think I'm assuming so don't quote me on this but it looks like they use the same type of building methods Sharon says Ariel I've decided that you would make the most fabulous history teacher it's alive <laughs> Indeed it is. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you enjoyed my history videos. Thank you for tuning in. Came in. Let's go down here. Through the city. Who else likes wiggling through the city? Most saints are the gods of old, says Justin. Indeed, indeed, Justin. There's a lot there to talk about. That's for a different video. Maybe when I to the place where I extended my stay, I'll talk about it. I'll show you. All right.
we're back. This is some bad service here. So bear with me. So this is the Roman Agora. Bad service, ooh. All right, here we have the Roman Agora dates back to the time of Emperor Galerius took over in the 200s, 300s and the Romans built a sizable city here a few weeks back they turned the Agora into a summer cinema says Chris whoa that's so cool that is amazing Chris right here we have a small stage which was used as places for gladiatorial battles We got coffee shops. Oh, nice Fredo Espresso right by Roman Room. Plus great cocktails on that corner, says Chris. Oh yeah. Chris. Class says, are you not entertained? is from. Chris made a great reference in relation to the gladiatorial battles here. Are you not entertained? Wow. Beautiful. So, watch my Instagram stories. I was at a rooftop bar which was this one. This one right here. A rooftop bar right there. No, actually, it was a little bit further down. We're gonna go a little bit further down. So the reference was the movie Gladiator, where Maximus yells when he first fights his gladiatorial battle and wins. He's pissed off that people are cheering this that just happened hey Carly nice to see you here so it's currently close today let me go over here currently close today the rooftop bar look good. Oh yes. Brilliant that I've seen uh, seen that about a hundred times as Wendy. Oh Wendy, you really like Gladiator. That's cool. So the Greeks taking over, I mean, sorry, the Romans taking over Greece, the Hellenic Empire, which they end up calling Grecia. That's where the term starts of Greece, which ended up being used by uh, empires afterwards. Was very pivotal for the Romans because the Romans really looked up to the Hellenic Empire, aka Greece. And they architecture, their science, 
their army tactics, such as the phalanx, which is one of the first uh, army tactics used by Alexander the Great, if I recall correctly, even though that was used also, I think, even before then. They use many aspects of Greek culture. So it's almost like, I would say a modern day equivalent would be, what if America took over Britain and made it the 51st state? Of course, that's not going to out there. <laughs> Don't get nervous. Don't worry. America's not coming. But if America were to do that and take over Britain, that's the same thing as the Romans taking over Greece. They took over their forefathers, in essence. So being on this site is very important because it is the very roots as to why the Roman Empire leaned on the shoulders of the giants that became before then the Hellenic Empire. Class says, God save the queen. <laughs> Continue walking around. Usually it's open. I ended up getting a, a combo ticket and they told me that. Was no. okay. Cooper of Britain. <laughs> Rather than Brexit, it would be, uh, oh no, 51st statist. spreading the word of pressing that light. Oh look, some watermelons being sold. Hey, from Japan, welcome. Hope I get service again. All right, everyone, sorry about the bad service. I apologize on behalf of... Those are massive watermelons, says David, yeah. George says the Beatles invaded the US. Indeed they did, indeed they did. Terrible invasion to that war. Bob, like, yes. Ah, uh, bad service. Justin, <laughs> thank you for uh, your extra insight. Hey! This is the Bay Haman.
paths before, but in 1440, 1430, the Ottoman Turks took over. It was Murad II who took over with his Janissaries and other military that was pretty advanced for the time. One of the first military really using big cannons and uh, guns and whatnot. This is the Turkish baths built in 1444. Now apparently this is, has been used for other purposes. Look at this. Amazing to see it it's still. I think it was used as a bath until very recently. Very green says uh, George. Yeah, very green indeed. Let me know how to say your name in English from Japan. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's midnight in Japan. Wow. And Kay says a big shout out for Matt for putting up extra information. Yeah, Matt right now on Facebook, because I'm multi-streaming, is giving some amazing extra information about this. Lorraine, how are you doing? Lorraine says this city is so beautiful. It really is. It's a magnificent city. Really wonderful. Truly, truly astonished by this city. One of the best cities I've visited in Europe. It certainly is a beautiful city, yeah. It's a bike friendly city, yes. Thanks for your life. You know, great question. I don't know. I don't see too many bike lanes in the middle of the street. Though by the waterfront there is, and I see some people on scooters. I can't really tell if it's super bike friendly. It seems pretty intimidating with uh, Greek drivers. I don't think Greek drivers really care about bicyclists. So I would practice caution maybe using a bike here. Deco says go Bulgaria next stop. <laughs> Deco, what's, what's the scene in Bulgaria? Let me know. I know there's the city of Sofia, which is very beautiful. Service in Bulgaria. Let's go a little bit further down. So we walked through this area yesterday. Hey, Nomades! Nomades says, Ariel, que querido, estamos aquí viendo contigo. Espero que todo está bien en Argentina. Starting to see some needles.
Kathy says, glad you were blessed with this weather. It is mostly sunny, apparently, in Thessaloniki. Mostly, mostly sunny during the summertime. Que bien español, dice Brian. Si, puedes preguntarme cualquier cosa en español que quieres. Yo hablo mayormente inglés, pero también puedo traducir cualquier cosa que quieres que menciono. Are we going to the Hephraian Hep Fortress? Asked Paul. Great question, Paul. We are going probably tomorrow during the day, during Greek day. American viewers. Um, I would say stay tuned for that about 12. About 12 noon Greek time. Let me know what time that is in America time. Okay, now we're getting good service, yeah, because now we're a little bit more in the... I love this square, absolutely beautiful square. We've seen more of it. Watch my video from yesterday. But today we're gonna go... Some great food. First some yidos, and then we're gonna hunt down... Pastries. So, I might do a video also on the okay during the day. Um, I'm not sure if it's seven days a week. I'll look into it. Love those buildings with broad streets. Yeah, yeah, I'm loving them too. It's absolutely gorgeous. The broad streets. George says, I ha I've heard Action Kid has been having a lot of fun in LA. That's good for him. <laughs> That's good for him. I am, I am happy for him having fun in LA. What I love about your Greek wanderings is the variety of environments you are experiencing, says Inspire Life. Right. Is there rollerblading? I have not seen ro roller rollerblading here. Roland. None whatsoever to speak of. Espera, Panagiotis. Welcome. So, Panagiotis, we're gonna hunt some food. Ariel, can you rollerblade? No. Blading for me, no skateboarding, no water surfing, no, no bicycling, no tricycling, no unicycling for me. Getting a trigono? I I one, so watch watch my Instagram story. Bear with me, I gotta switch over my uh, glasses.
rent. This is a great view of the dumpster, says uh, <laughs> David. I'm so glad you're enjoying it, David. All right, let's wander. Mater says, oh man, I was waiting for a tricycling video. How does the scale of the city feel? So the city, the, city, the city feels very big. Feeling. But it's actually not that big. So you city, I think, in a few hours. That's, that's the vibe I'm getting. Yesterday. It's not as sprawling as, say, uh, Athens. And it's no, not as big, I think, as Manhattan in terms of size. It was in bad service, this is kind of annoying. We didn't come through this bad service yesterday. Tech forget the rest. Hmm. Hey, I'm not sure what's happening today. Uh, very terrible service. Even though I'm in the same area that I was yesterday. I'm not sure why. Like, I'm in the same area, having a terrible service. Hey, expired. Says, have you seen any interesting design here? So, not that much interesting design. This does remind me of Mexico. Due to these type of buildings. But... There's not that much, like, really affect. Uh, this is the main area. All right, cool. Some flurs maybe, maybe Marianne, it's, it's a bit weird. Yesterday was perfect. Five hours, perfect. So Marianne, yeah, sometimes there's atmospheric conditions that are really um, kind of out of anyone's control. Like sun, solar flares or storms or heavy winds, I think sometimes might affect it. Uh, action show says Ariel Antonio Banderas is filming his new movie in Thessaloniki and today he's in the Safia area which is not very far from the Thessaloniki center also oh, cool that he's filming here today
is right over here. Um, you see in the corner of my screen, there is a Greek Orthodox priest or, or, or monk or friar. Let me know how they're called in the Greek Orthodox faith. Having a coffee. I've seen so many Greek Orthodox having coffees, the clergy, having a coffee, chatting with a local, chatting with other people. I've seen them be like use their cell phones and be on YouTube and Instagram. Very interesting because it's very different from the Catholic religion uh, where Catholic priests, indeed, they are talkative and outgoing and sociable. No, of course, it depends, but uh, they're not really out and about hanging out in the places. You don't really see them kind of chilling at a cafe. Home. I haven't seen that in New York. Uh, so <laughs> let me know. Does that well, regardless of what religion are you are, uh, might be um, Islamic or or uh, Protestant or storm reached earth yesterday oh interesting that might be that might be the reason why interesting they're called papas or gilipos 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 thank you so much papas or gilipos Panajota says, they told me in Italy that it's very common. Really? Okay, I have not known. Very obvious to me. Maybe it's because uh, they dress more in plain clothes in Italy sometimes. As opposed to here, where they're usually... Panajota says, papas. Yes. would go for drinks with his peoples but would they mingle with other people their peoples that's that's cool stick out more because of their very long beards and all right So, we might return to this place because this place is really cool. Stay tuned. Teko says food, yes. But let's go for some Slovaki first. I'm so excited. We're right nearby, right around the corner. We have a few food stops all in this within this block. Okay, everyone, so I apologize for kind of <laughs> being very quiet. A, my screen was very dark and I couldn't relay anything. And then B, there was terrible service. So uh, now we are in a few block radius, which I think things will be a, a lot better. So we're gonna try a few food stops here within just this short radius. Um, Thessaloniki is known for food. A lot of people know this city as being the foodie capital of Greece. You know, like New York is the foodie capital. Of or London is for England. One of the things that blew me away the most was the Slovaki. Let's go try one of the best Slovakis here. Oh, and this place was working to me as well. Ooh, okay, we have another food stop here, but let's have the savory first. There's a lot of sweets here. Let's have savory first. And then Joseph says it's called uh, Su, Su Vlaki. Not Slovaki, not like a Slovak. <laughs> not like a Slovak. The great people of Slovakia. All right, we're gonna go in here, bear with me. Thank 
Primera. Sparkling water, uh, the soda here. So this place, I think, is called somewhere along the lines of Delicatessen in Greek. And it was 440, 440, so it's not too bad, 440. And this is one of the higher rated places in the middle of Thessaloniki Center. Also, this place is packed to the brim uh, late at night. Right now, it's pretty early. I think a lot of people don't eat really at this time. So that's why it's pretty calm right now. Action Show says the best. Yeah, well, I've already eaten here a few times. I've been so blown away by it. Um, please order one for me, says Nick. <laughs> Indeed, Nick. And Panajota says, but for Greece, the Orthodox priests keep their robes and nothing wrong in having them in the cafe. No, no, no judgments. Ah, uh, Panajotes. I just, I just found it very amusing, very interesting. Um, Panajotes says if you stop one of the Orthodox priests, they will talk to you. Oh, cool. That's awesome to hear. Can you make your order into a combo? Says uh, George. Ah, uh, I think they have a combo. I think you can order both meats, but I'm not entirely sure. So they have chicken, they have pork. Pork, I think, is the most popular. Then they also have buffalo. It's about 16. So I got some sparkling water. This is soda water, Schweppes. So not sparkling water actually, it is uh, seltzer. And here it is, things fly away here. So bear with me, it's uh, heavy winds. Look at this. This is their Slovakia. Now, I thought I had good Slovakia in Athens. And I thought I had, you know, okay Slovakia in Santorini. But look at this Slovaki. The bread has a little bit of a yellowish color to it, the pita. And it has an interesting taste to it. Look at these beautiful, huge meat chunks. Look how perfectly wrapped this is. Teko says it's a Slovaki.
Tomatoes are very fragrant. You have the uh, tzatziki sauce, absolutely amazing. And also all the french fries on this Slovakia from Slovenia, of course. Of course, this is from Slovenia. When I first bit in, bought, bought into this, bit into this, I was absolutely blown away by how juicy the pork is. The pork, so, so vlaki, so vlaki, is pieces of skewered pork, very, very tender. A lot of the places I had over there in Athens were a bit drier than this. But here, the tenderness is out of this world. It's a Greek chip buddy, says uh, Phil. Yeah, it's almost like a chip buddy, almost, almost. Chip buddy is like a bacon sandwich, I think, in England. Now, I love the, the pita over here. Very good, it tastes very different from the other types of pitas. And also, we have the french fries. French fries here, just in general in Greece, are not as greasy as American french fries. They fry it differently, or they're using different oils. So they have a little bit of a drier taste to them. Am I thinking that's a good thing? It tastes a little bit more like roasted potatoes as opposed to a very greasy french fry. Mm. And the tzatziki sauce, they're using very fresh ingredients because tzatziki sauce here goes down really, really well. Sean says these are not chips, these are, well, I call them french fries. In the US we call them french fries, but yes, in England you will call them chips. Let me know, how would you call them in Greece? Are they cooked in olive oil? I'm not 100% sure, but I would, I would venture a guess that they are, as opposed to using vegetable oil or canola oil like they do in the US. And Terry says, yes, time for lunch. And chip buddies, I guess, would be fry sandwich in the US. Crisp buddies would be a chip sandwich in the US, interesting. Panajotas says, no, they're not cooked in olive oil. How are they made? Vegetable oil, says Panajotas. Nonetheless, it tastes really good. See how they skewer the pork. Souvlaki. Wendy says it's delicious. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's so delicious. I love the the bread. The bread is just so well done, really well done. Mm, wow. Mater says, no matter the language, it's called good. Indeed it is, Mater. Indeed it is. I wouldn't need a bib eating that, says um, Inkspire Life. Because it was so messy. It, it doesn't get too messy. I get what you mean, but luckily it doesn't spill too much. Here they roll it really well. Sometimes they kind of 
overstuff them with tomatoes and tzatziki so it can get really messy uh, I encountered that more in Athens but here this one's just so perfectly wrapped just wanted to say that your vlogs are one of the best I've seen on the web very well researched says Mahesh thank you so much Mahesh I appreciate that you can say you can see that the pita is soft not stale right class nor is it heavily processed because heavily processed pita has that kind of it looks like white bread you know and like in america sometimes you have that pita that has that little white bread look to it it's a bit too soft a bit too soft there's a lot of extra ingredients in that pita in in the u.s i have not seen a pita like this in america I'm not sure what they're doing different. Maybe it's a different type of grain. Maybe it has, of course, many less ingredients, of course. Maybe they're adding some other ingredient. Do let me know. Why is the pita here, A, yellow, and B, very different in taste than the ones in America? Fofuto says they're made out of corn. Really? Panajotas, the two panajotas, panajotas came, panajotas F, both say corn as well. Interesting, thank you. So corn, interesting. And it's nicely charred as well. You see the charring right here. So that's interesting. It's more like lava, says Bar. What do you mean? And here you can also get what I think they call the Arabian tortilla. They're using two different words, but it's a very thin, very thin uh, pita bread that's used more in Middle Eastern cuisine. You can also get that here, which is also really good. And also you can get a hamburger served in a pita here, which is very interesting. says the panajotises are multiplying. There's a lot of people named out panajotis here. They might go by panos or pan. I heard that those are the nicknames, the common ones. Greece is heavily focused on the highest quality of natural ingredients, says Ptolemy. This is corn, but Greece is, isn't doing a lot of pesticides. That's why Greece has ex ex exceptionally low bee deaths. Oh, that's interesting. Thank you so much. So it's confirmed. This is a corn pita, aka a gordita. <laughs> like quite literally, it is a gordita in, Me in Mexican food standards. Because a gordita is like a very thick, sometimes corn tortilla, sometimes it's flour. That's interesting, gordita. Possibly semolina? Yes, they have semol semolina on the outside. Race going on, I think so. There's a lot, of, there's a lot of noise right now. Here, a lot of commotion behind me. Ahen says, Thank you, brother, for your videos. My pleasure, Ahen. So, feel free to ask me anything. Um, I don't have too much to talk about these food items until we get to the next one. We're gonna, I'm gonna try to show you a Bugatti, I'm gonna see if it's open, and then we'll go a few other places. How much was this? I think they charged me one euro for this. So I think this might have been about 340 euro, or give or take. So it was 440 euro for both of these. But soda, water here, they charge sometimes about up to a one euro, 150 euro, depends on the place. 
Christine uses baked hot bread. Oh, so cool. Who had the idea of sticking a few french fries in those? I always wonder that, says Dova too. That's a great question. I always thought that was like more of a, like a European thing, like out, outside of like a Western European thing. Excuse me. I thought that either that was a Western European thing or like a, a American thing uh, that they just made in when when Greeks came over to Astoria, Queens. They were like, Americans like these french fries. Let's stick them in. I thought that was the case, but I don't know. I might be wrong. I wonder if it was a thing when the Greeks went over to New York and to the rest of America and then when some of them immigrated back, they brought it back. Maybe that's the case or maybe not. Maybe it came another way. Maybe it came when the French or the English uh, were camping out here in World War I. Maybe that was the case. Ptolemy says, uh, the real reason why Greece's products and greens are very natural is because of very high quality. Yes. Greece doesn't grow corn. Greece apparently does grow corn. If anyone can confirm, I think they do because there's uh, quite a few corn products here. There is a few more bites. Irene says in Chile, we have a hot dog with french fries. Yeah. Emily is tuning in. Hey, Emily. Emily later today is going to give me, so kind enough to give me a tour of some food here in, in um, Thessaloniki. So there might, there might be an extra food live even later tonight. Stay tuned. So Emily says there's a lot of corn here. And Greece grows corn all around the country, says Ptolemy. Thank you, Ptolemy. So Irene was mentioning that in Chile, they actually have hot dogs with french fries in it. Yeah, it's common in Chile, it's common in Venezuela, in Colombia. So it's interesting, all around the world, you have this kind of mishmash of different cultures. And the thing in the US, we have our own kind of version of uh, these sandwiches, but they are mixed with that kind of um, influence from Middle Eastern immigrants, Lebanese and Israelis, uh, and also we have, of course, the Greek influence, all kind of mishmashing together. And then there's, of course, a few Moroccans and there's Egyptians, and thus we have uh, gyros and, and pita sandwiches that taste very different. Do Greeks eat rice? Great question. I've seen very little rice dishes. I think they're mostly with seafood. I know they do a lot of saffron rice, which you saw with my octopus in Santorini, which was absolutely amazing. Uh, let me know, if, is rice here common? It is common in Greek American cuisine. Basically any meal that you order in Greek American cuisine, you could get rice with it. Orfobuto says, yes, we eat our rice. Cool, thank you so much, Orfobuto. And Victoria, what's for dessert? We have a few places to go for dessert. So wish, wish my stomach some luck, because we have a few places to bite from dessert. Hopefully motorcyclists don't come driving to where I'm sitting. Uh, what's the difference between a gyro and a pita bread? No, gyro is just what is in the pita. Here they just call it a pita sandwich, uh, whatever is in the pita. So you might get gyro, which is um, sliced meat, similar to the Middle Eastern shawarma. Or you might get suvaki, which is the skewered meat. Which in Middle East, you would call it a turkey, you would call it kebab. 
Can you please find a bakery restaurant that sells sweet pastry bugatsa? Yes, Lisa. That is a list. That's our next stop. All right, that was great. How's the hummus in Greece? I think hummus is really associated more with being an Israeli thing. I, I, I thought I would find more hummus here, but I have not encountered to too much hummus, Teresa. Great question. Greeks out there, yet again, let us know. What's the, what's the deal with hummus? Because also it's very prevalent in Greek American cuisine. I haven't seen it here. Nina, what did you see? A su, uh, su, su vlaki sandwich. He does sandwich. So that was Delicatessen, written in Greek. Check it out, really great place. Silver Fire and... Um... Excuse me. Panagiotis also, and Emily says, Nala hummus in Greek cuisine. So that, the reason why us Americans might see a lot of hummus, again, might be the influence from Greeks living very close to other ethnicities. Uh, in early Greek immigrant history, they might have lived close to Syrians and Lebanese. Like in Brooklyn or in, in Lower Manhattan. And then later on, they might have moved close to Egyptians, like in Queens. So that might be the reason why we have hummus in Greek American cuisine. Of course, I'm speculating. Let me know if uh, anyone knows exactly the reason. All right, let's uh, go into this place. I heard it was interesting. Let's check it out. This was recommended to me by an amazing blogger called Urban Wanderers. What do you recommend? What's really good here? Um, what, what's good? What do you recommend? Um, Very good to eat. Um, For a small, oh, yeah. another good Okay, wonderful.
right, so let's try this place out. So here, look at this, a slim bar. This is so interesting. <laughs> and no sugar that they use, so it's all naturally sweetened. Well, na well not sweetened with sugar, uh, which is nice. Because in America, sometimes, you know, you have uh, sugar. If you're lucky, you have cane sugar, but most places have um, corn syrup. So it's nice that this is naturally sweetened. So we're gonna try this Slim Bar, which is made hazelnut and white chocolate. It is a bit expensive, yeah. It's seven, 7.29 euro that I spent for this. It's aligned with American prices. Actually, in America, this would be a little bit more expensive. In America, this would be more like $10. $10. And this one I'm actually very excited for. Look at this. Wow. Look at that. Also, all of our Greek desserts use sugar. Smudge out this. Well, apparently, this one they don't. So, apparently, no. Apparently, it's all sweetened with, um, she said, honey and other things. Up. But it just says because they're not Greek. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> we're gonna try. We're gonna try uh, Bugatsa for us. Don't worry, everyone. Uh, Thessaloniki is great for food overall. So there's a lot of other types of food. So it doesn't all have to be strictly 100% Greek. Uh, we can try a, a few different things. <laughs> I hope all the Greek viewers out there are not offended. How dare you come to Greece and not try things that are purely Greek? <laughs> How dare you try something that's not Greek or anything related to this? I don't even know what this would be considered as. This is truly a fusion. Ooh, wow, pistachio cake. This looks good. Amazing. Wow. Oh my god. Pistachio to the brim. Pistachio cake. Pistachio crushed pistachios. Crushed pistachios. It has pistachio frosting. Mmm. Absolutely delicious. Not super sweet, so I don't get that like aftertaste of, 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 of super sugariness. But you definitely get the taste of pistachio. And it's not that thick pistachio that you might have in American cakes. Because while America has a lot of beautiful food, there's a lot of processed food in America. And when you buy something pistachio, they're gonna give you a synthesized version of pistachio. But this is real, 100% covered to the brim with pistachios, which I am really in love with. Mmm. So, such a bright green pistachio, too. Yeah, it is a bright green pistachio. Apparently, here in, Thessal in Thessaloniki, they go nuts for nuts. There's a lot of nuts here. I went to have a cocktail, they gave me nuts. Here's a place doing all desserts with nuts. And then uh, there's a bunch of nuts everywhere. How nutty. Mm. This is one of the best cakes I've ever had. I am not exaggerating. I don't eat too much cake. There's some strawberry, some strawberry cake in there. Or appears to be strawberry. Wow. Mm. This might not be Greek, but oh my God, I'm really going for it. I gotta save space because I have, I wanna show you a few more things. So I'm gonna save this for later. 
This is, this is absolutely my wine. Highly recommend this pistachio cake from this place. It's so good. It is amazing. What are the tiny little red morsels? I don't know. They might be a hard candy. They might be a hard candy. I couldn't quite tell. That looks very good. Send me some, says Sarah. Uh, send us some, please, says Bar. Yeah, I would need water, yes. So I'm going to need water. Well, it is not sugary. There's definitely a lot of sweetness in here in terms of uh, honey or whatever other types of sugars they use. She said coconut sugar as well. So let's try the Slim Bar. You know, I have like negative associations with bars because in America all the bars are confectionaries that are packaged. You know, they have their own beauty to them. And they definitely have a very great history with uh, America really becoming kind of a massive influence of food around the world. But, you know, after you eat many bars as a little kid, you end up realizing, oh, that's my, that's why it's, a portion of Americans are in not so good health. So I don't have the best association with these type of bars. I'm going to give it a try because she was very adamant. Let's try it out. like a gallon of water this is heavy this is like the most dense one of the most densest cakes I've ever tried it tastes like very fresh hazelnut so you also have crushed hazelnut and the hazelnut oh, more crushed hazelnut inside this cake you're basically eating like a pound of hazelnut <laughs> you're eating like a huge bag of hazelnuts condensed into a tiny little bar if you were starving in the middle of a deserted Greek island, I think this could sustain you for a week. <laughs> that is a lot of nuts in one small package. Wow. Big nuts for a small package. I'm afraid to take another bite. <laughs> if I dare to take another bite, I might not, not eat again till, till when I go back to New York. <laughs> it's good. It's good. But this is crazy heavy. Crazy heavy. If you're, if you're starving, if you've been walking for like seven, eight hours through the hot Grecian sun, get this Slim Bar. You'll be satisfied in two bites. Wow. I'm going to save this for later. No way can I eat <laughs> this entire bar. Oh my god. <laughs> two dollars, two, two euro and 79 cents. Well, two euro and 79 cents. I think this is an excellent deal to eat basically almost a pound of hazelnuts. Very good deal. <laughs> Oh, now, now I can, now I don't need to. I, I'll put this in my bag. I don't need to worry today. I can walk for hours. I'll at least have some sustenance. I can feed an entire family, says Nina. Yeah, you could feed an entire family with that slim bar. Definitely try the pistachio cake. This is divine. The slim bar, very good if you're into bars. Not sugary like a, a, a confectionery that you would find in the bodega in the middle of the US. M much more fresher in taste, but super, super strong. Where are you going after Thessaloniki? I'm back to Athens, Athens, Athens. I'm going for a weekend. But the videos are going to end in Thessaloniki. So tomorrow's the last day of official videos. I am going to take it easy for my final weekend in Athens. Say the name of the of the place, says a Frufuto.
Exoretin. Exoretin. I don't know. Exoretin. Don't know how to say it. Hey, Elaine's from the UK. We stayed in Electro Electro Hotel. That's so cool. That's so cool that you stay in Electro Hotel. That's awesome. All right, let's continue walking around. Will Nightbot ever leave Centurion? I think he fell in love with Centurion. Or have I been to Poland? No, not yet, but maybe one day. I know Poland has a lot of cool history. All right, we gotta walk very far away for a next stop. Uh, are you guys ready to? Are you ready to walk like a massive amount? I ate that bar. I gotta walk at least 30 miles to make that bar worth it. So are you ready to walk very far for the next stop? Let me know. Please show us the Corinth Canal. Ah, is that the one that connects the Peloponnese? Wendy says I'm ready, always, okay. Keep this place in mind because we're coming here later for some coffee, coffee. Bugatsa, walking shoes on, says Kay. Oh, great. All right, we gotta walk really, really, really. I'm not sure if all of you can handle it, we still got it's gonna be quite intense and here it is wonderful good still oh tomorrow okay do you know where I can find some bugatsa uh, right what? now do you, do you know where I can find some bugatsa nearby no. no. Okay. No, no worries. Tomorrow. What tastes very? What's also another thing that's from Thessaloniki that's very good? Mm, this spolato with cheese. Okay. And this, and this red with cheese. Wonderful. I'll try this one and that one. Okay. Thank you. Also, I'll have a bottle of water, please. Anajota says, just to be clear, we're not shouting that you didn't try uh, Greek desserts. It was mostly obvious that she was really into the safe choices. I don't know why. <laughs> why play so safe? Like, I'm a young dude. <laughs> Do I look like I need to be a safe tourist? I don't know. In, in the US, that that hasn't happened to me in other countries. So I'm not sure why they're, they're playing it safe. Maybe, maybe I should tell them, no, no, let me... Let me try it. But to be honest, everyone, I, while I do my research, I don't know everything going to a country. So I don't know whether a dessert is, uh, according to the culture, seen as something more that for touristy, more safer. I don't know. Uh, I'm doing these videos on my own for this video. And, um, and you know, I think it is important to sometimes just ask it's okay to ask some cultures might might try to consider and we are in the greek culture and as far as i understand with the greek culture and from studies made psychologically greek culture tends to kind of read your your 
your body language more than what you're saying, which is a, a bit opposite from American culture. American culture is more kind of straight speaking, but here in Greek culture is a bit more kind of, they're trying to read you beyond your words. And maybe uh, that's why they're playing it safe. Maybe that is one of the reasons why they're kind of just assuming, hey, this guy might not know, and let's, let's give him a good service. They're being hospitable. I don't see that as a bad thing. Um, but if it requires me saying, hey, no, no, tell me really what's interesting, then I'll try to do that next time. And no Bugatsa here. They sell out. So uh, places here, just, just like in, in France or in Italy, which is really awesome, things are made made fresh here. So they don't sell, they don't make too much of something and then sell it for the next day. Uh, which again, may happen in the US, may happen in many other countries. But not so much in, in these European countries. So that's interesting that they uh, don't have any Bugatsa. It's for the morning. So it's, uh, Emily, yeah, I, tr I already tried Bugatsa and it's amazing. I haven't even made a video of it. I tried it from this place. But let's try these two other treats. Let's try it out. Let's try it out. Let's see. Elias says, don't worry, Ariel, after all you showed us what city might provide authentic or not authentic, it doesn't matter. And I think also there is value to showing a aspect of a city from the point of view as a, of a tourist. I get it that people want to show, you know, people want to show how locals are. There's quite an obsession in, especially also in American culture, travel like a local, be a local. I know I hear that a lot in travel videos. I don't know. Sometimes I think it's okay to be a tourist. It's okay to ask questions, to wonder what people might recommend, to be lost in a pastry shop or in the city, to not know your way around. That's okay uh, to not know your way around. It's okay to not be aware of where you're eating or not. Uh, it's okay to not really uh, uh, meet a local first in order to try anything, to go out do it you might be disappointed you might they in some cases here they might give you something that uh, they think you would like rather than something you think is actually really interesting to try or you might be truly surprised it depends on the culture it depends on the place and it depends on the time but that's the wonderful thing so yeah travel like a local has its merits but you're from a different culture. Embrace that. Yeah, I'm American. I'm New Yorker. I'm going to come over here and really enjoy kind of the random experiences that happens here. Um, so I think that's that's very important. Uh, Panagiotis says, no, 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 that, that wasn't our point. We were mostly angry at her. You did well and tried to present and ask her for recommendations. Says Panagiotis, so, okay, Panagiotis, thank you so much for clarifying. Okay, so, so. <laughs> Greeks are a little bit angry that uh, <laughs> the woman wasn't giving the best recommendations. But I've, I did notice that. Uh, this is not the first time I've encountered that by the Jota. So thank you so much for clarifying. But that's not the first time I encountered that. I've encountered, like I went to a, a restaurant and they would usually recommend me like the, the souvlaki, which, uh, I'm like at a seafood restaurant, why would I have a souvlaki? But they assume, oh, because you're American, you might find like an octopus weird. Um, so I've encountered that a few times, but that's okay. Lauren says, loving your trip. All right, let's try this out. I'm so excited for this. It's nice and warm. Uh, this place is no, is, has one of the top ratings in this area of the city. Let me know how I pronounce that. Mm. 
Ptolemy, you say these are cucos, cucos. Thank you so much. Or said like coques, cocos, hmm. cocos. Thank you so much. Really good, really interesting. I love the cheese inside. The cheese is a bit more kind of a savory taste to it. And the bread too, it's not so, uh, so sweet to it. So it tastes a little bit more savory. Hmm. Appears to have a cucos, says Ilias, cucos. It appears to have a egg wash on top of it. it. Appears to have an egg wash. And also another thing I want to mention um, to a lot of people tuning in. A lot of people get afraid when traveling uh, because they're afraid that, as I mentioned with the food, they might not encounter good food or it might be interest it might be very different food from where we're used to but the second thing is sometimes people are very afraid to um, try attempt to speak the language in fear of being embarrassed i would say um it's more worth trying even though you might completely mess up the language some place like here greece they don't take it too much to offense from what i've noticed uh, might be different in other countries. It depends on the country, but I don't encounter that in Greece. I have not encountered that in a few other uh, Mediterranean countries either, or like in Mexico, I have not encountered that. So keep that in mind. It's okay to kind of uh, attempt to say the words that you see over here. Mm. Wow. Really good. It tastes like a feta cheese, which I think it is a feta cheese. And yeah, this is a good savory treat. I would say this would make a good breakfast item. And it's still warm. Mm. Kay says, I'm disappointed you didn't buy me one. Panderjata says, yeah, we don't mind butchering Greek words. We butcher English ones. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad. Yeah. But just be aware that some cultures, indeed, they do uh, see it negatively. Uh, but this is not one of them. I'm not sure which cultures are like that. Let me know if, uh, if you know of or you're part of a culture that, you know, if you mispronounce words, they get more offended or they think you're making fun of them. All right, let's try this out. Have it with the coffee. I'm gonna have a coffee next. Are they closing? I hope the coffee bar I want to go doesn't close. But yeah, I'm gonna have it with the coffee next. Let's try this out. Mm. This one. This one basically tastes like a cheese pie with a little bit of cheese. Nice cheese pie. It's really good. It's really good. It tastes like it has the same type of texture of cheese pie. Super flaky. Super flaky and uh, the cheese similar to the feta cheese. It's very crumbly. Uh, and it has what appears to have also an egg wash on top. So it has that little bit of glaze on the top. Kay says it's too late for you to drink coffee. Well, today I'm making an exception because I want to show you some authentic Greek coffee. If you don't say bonjour in France when you enter an establishment, you're considered to be rude, says Chris. Yes, that's true, Chris. But, but here in Greece, uh, ah, everyone says yasus. But there's not that much small talk. I haven't come to small talk like you would in some parts in America where it is a bit more customary to have a little bit of small talk before you make your order. Um, it's more similar to England or to Italy in that regard. You say hello and kind of just make your order. I dislike when workers assume you're a local, even here in NYC, but I love trying new food, says uh, Veronica. <laughs> Some mispronounced words might mean something different, says Janice. That is true. It depends on the language. Some languages you can get very close to mispronouncing very uh, bad words. I don't think Greek would be one of them. 
But I think like more of the East Asian languages, like Chinese, then you might run into very big issues. Uh, it's usually, uh, yes, I usually eat them for breakfast, says Banajotas. Do you need to sell, uh, tell the server that you're done? Or do they bring you the check? No, it's not like the US. Unless yesterday. Yesterday was the only day, the only time in this entire two weeks that I encountered a server bringing me the check before I asked for it. But in general, no. You, you, they, you have to ask for the check. And depends on the place. If it's more local, they'll take their time bringing you the check. Hmm. Very good. Try this place out. Highly recommend it. This is a very central central area here next to all the tourist sites. Lisa says, look at what Sarah Louise wrote. Alright, let's read. You should try Churiel for something sweet. They have uh, great profidero. Profitero in town, and the shop is straight up the road you are since Action Show. Oh, cool Action Show. Thank you so much for the recommendation. Sarah says, after watching you over the past week, my family have just literally booked the holiday to Athens for Christmas. Thank you for showing us the real Greece. My pleasure, Sarah. My pleasure. I'm so glad um, you are already booking a trip to Greece. That's epic. By no means did I show the real Greece. I never like show the real so-and-so. But these are indeed live videos, so you're seeing it in real time. But I don't claim to be showing you the real city. <laughs> it's like people say, oh, you haven't seen the real New York. Uh, I don't know, I find that very kind of bothersome because everyone's New York is different. Same thing with uh, any type of big city. Every city has a different aspect to it. People experience the city in different ways. Depends on who you are. Sarah, thank you. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you enjoyed these videos. So glad you booked your trip. Enjoy Athens and Christmas. All right, now we have maybe one to two more stops left. But first, coffee. Let's try it out. Are you from Thessaloniki? Uh, almost. Uh, I'm here since 20 years. 20 years? Oh, wow. Oh, that's quite a while. Even more, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be amazing. It's a very, very, very interesting city. It is. It is amazing food. I'm really blown away by the food. Do you have any recommendations of what else is good right next door? The Apple Town, for sure. The Apple Town. Yes, the, <laughs> it's like the traditional architecture of... Uh, Macedonian style. Yes. But you have to walk a lot, and you you can catch the view of the city there. Oh, wonderful. there is this um, walls of uh, uh, like the city walls or something. Yeah. And there is a uh, you know a place that you can see almost the whole city from there, from up there. Oh, wonderful. Beautiful. You're probably gonna see that tomorrow. Thank How you. about for food? Food right here, right here. Now I I don't have something 
Oh, no worries. What do, you, uh, what do you like about here? What's your favorite pastry? Uh, once in a week. Ah, the, the, the pies. Yeah, the pies. The pies. Oh, the pies are really good. The pies. Yes. Actually, this place is from uh, since 1950s or something, as they say, and they make traditional pies. Right. It's called piropitaki, which is like cheese pie. It means oh, cheese that's pie. what it means. It means cheese pie. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's wonderful. Yes. Uh, wonderful meeting you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Me too. Have a good day. Bye -bye. Good day cheese pie. <laughs> that was so cool. Uh, so he said that the place name means cheese pie, and he said to go to the I don't know how to pronounce it, but the for, the Byzantine fortress in the north. So stay tuned for that. And is it me, or did that guy look a lot like Pedro Pascal, the actor Pedro Pascal, who's the Mandalorian, and who's also in a lot of awesome movies? He looked a lot like Pedro Pascal. I hear a pro protest. Let's see if this is open. Okay, I'm not, uh, not entirely sure what was the miscommunication. I think they either might have assumed that I was asking for a Greek style coffee, maybe like a frappe or a Greek uh, brewed coffee, because this particular place all sells Italian beans. 
But what I was asking for is Greek coffee, which most around the world is, is known as Turkish. <laughs> Turkish coffee. All right. So let me show it to you. It's a very, very thick, thick coffee. It's made with very fine powder. It could easily look like uh, Insta coffee, but it's not Insta coffee. It's very groundly, finely grounded coffee. Uh, much more finer grounded than any espresso. So without further ado, let's try it out. And Panajotis left the super chat, five euro super chat. Thank you so much, Panajotis. Yeah, it's, it's very thick. And she was telling me that it's the same price for the full cup, which is a huge Greek coffee. So this might have a little bit of a difference from, from Turkish coffee because it's gigantic. Usually it's, it would be like a third of this if you would drink it more traditionally. Look at that. So not a mocha, no milk is involved in the process of this coffee at all. It is pure sludge, literally. Pure sludge. It's such pure sludge that they give you a free bottle of water included with the price of a Turkish coffee. Turkish coffee in New York will cost you like five dollars. So here's one euro for like three Turkish coffees and they give you a free water because it's that intense. I'm sitting here with my Nescafe, says Victoria. Oh cool, Victoria. Wait for the grit to settle, says Eleni. Indeed, Eleni. It is very hot, so it's boiling, so it has to cool down just a little bit. It just has to cool down. Eleni says you have to wait a minute for the Greek coffee. Indeed. I got Vietnamese coffee at home. So Vietnamese coffee is similar in taste to Greek coffee. Because the, the beans are also very kind of acidic and strong. Ryan says, is this Nescafe? No, not here. This is not Nescafe. My Lord. Mm. So. Greek coffee slash Turkish coffee has a very strong aroma to it. Mm. And the aroma is different from a espresso or from a a, um, a filter coffee or a French press, very different aroma. The aroma also almost feels more kind of earthy, more stronger, more, you can smell the sludge, I think. That's, that's how powerful the smell is. So coffee grounds, if you ever ground, if you ever made espresso and smelled the puck, which is the grounds that are left over after you put water pressure through the coffee grounds, it smells like that, just a little bit more. It's beautiful. The coffee grounds have not settled. They are still floating above. Um, Silverfire says that tea coffee, Greek coffee, uh, was Egyptian or. This sounds like an international incident in the making. <laughs> so this is a little bit different because they made it so quickly. If you were to go to... If you were to go to Turkey, um, they would make it slower. They would kind of let it bubble up to the top and then kind of do a thing where they toss it and turn it. Bless it, you know, they would do a lot of things. Um, and then if you really have a, like a super traditional one over there in the, the country whose name should not be mentioned, sometimes they take up to 30 minutes to make you 
a coffee because they're you know cooking it to the extreme this one she did it in a matter of seconds so she did a different process not exactly sure what she did let me know i think she just put the coffee grounds and kind of whipped it as opposed to boiled it like a, on a ebeck mm. super super thick super thick it tastes very bitter and that's why you, you would have a greek coffee because you want that super bitterness Lise says she did a, a double espresso. No, this is not espresso. The way you can tell is the look. This is not crema. This is pure sludge. Look how sludgy this is. Pure sludge. Ironically, they use Italian coffee brands for all of their Italian espresso. Hey. I am Maria. They oh, Maria, hey. From Instagram. Oh, from Instagram. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I did not realize. We were stuck in traffic for yeah. such a long time yeah. and we were watching your video. Oh, cool. So right by. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, thank you so much for saying hi. Wait, wait. <laughs> hey, Maria Urbanist watches on uh, or follows me on Instagram. How's it going? What? I watch your videos too. What? Hey. Watch your videos too. You do, yeah. Oh, that's so cool. How, how's it going? Good. 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 Do you want to grab a coffee tomorrow? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Okay, I'll send you on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, send me a okay. listener. I love your coffee series. Yeah. Perfect. It's my sister. Oh, your sister. Oh, you both look alike a lot. Enjoy. <laughs> I'm drinking good coffee right yeah, now. Sure. Yeah. So we'll keep in touch. I'll, okay, I'll, okay, I'll perfect. Keep in touch. Have, Have a great day. Bye. -bye. <laughs> so that is Maria. Everyone give a round of hearts to Maria and her sister. Um, She's an amazing Instagram photographer. She has been watching the show for quite a while. And this is my first experience of getting spotted in Greece. <laughs> That's cool. Um, she's an amazing Instagram photographer. I'll try to find her Instagram handle and uh, put it in the comments afterwards. But, but um, she takes a lot of photos of coffee shops. So she knows her coffee. So that's really cool. No wonder she found me. She probably saw the coffee and she was like, that's the one. <laughs> that's so cool. Mm. Paul says, wow. Ludo says, you're getting famous all around the world. <laughs> First, you know, in Mexico, I was spotted like six times. Here, 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 one so far. So it's awesome. <laughs> uh, Barry boy, nice to see you here. So small the world of ours. That was amazing. Christine says hi everyone. Yes, Christine, nice to see you here. Welcome. Ofofutos. <laughs> I'm not going to read Ofofutos' uh, comment. <laughs> um. Yes, she will know where to take you tomorrow for authentic Greek coffee. I'm going to ask her. I'm going to ask her if there's a place where they do it with the... I'm not sure how you call it in Greek. The Ebek, which is the Turkish word, but in Greek. And Ariel, I feel that Greek Arabian tea coffee in my head. This is class. Oh yeah, this is strong. So you taste the coffee grounds, it has a lot of texture to it. As I mentioned, it's very sludgy. So imagine drinking a very heavy hot chocolate, but you add no milk. You just add water and you just put a bunch of powder in that hot chocolate. Many of you probably have had that experience at some point. And this is amazing. Amazing. Not so traditional, but still really good. I mean the coffee done in Chovilo, says uh, Panajotas. Hey, Maria, uh, Maria K says, I have a lot of Maria fans. Yeah, there's a, quite a lot of Marias that watch. Quite a lot of Marias, because I've been getting a lot of Greek viewers. 
So we got Marias, we got Panajotises, we got like two or three Vaseliosos, we got a few Georges. Please describe the coffee in poetry, says another Maria. Wow, we got a few Marias tuning in. How many Marias do we have today? If you want to visit a good place for food in Thessaloniki, I can suggest to you uh, Curbeti. Did he get the Triangulo pastry? Uh, I tried it yesterday. I mean, I tried it earlier today. It's on my Instagram stories. I don't think I'm gonna have another one. I'm a bit full. And that dessert is quite an intense one, but maybe by tomorrow I'll show you one. Does Meter ask, does bottled water here taste the same? No. Most of the bottled water here is from the country, Greece. It has a slightly different taste to it. I think it's mostly mineral water, what they're using. Because this does not taste like pure uh, distilled water, or uh, not distilled, or purified water like we have in the US. It has a little bit of a mineral taste to it. Fun fact, Greeks does not conjugate in Greek. Names do not conjugate in Greek, says Benedictus. Ooh, what do you mean? And try the freaking Zeno Nero, says Ofufutos. <laughs> Ofufutos, you gotta have patience. I have no idea where to find it. Uh, will you visit San Dimitrios Church? I did in the beginning of this video. Silverfire. Check it out after this. It's done. Benedictus says. Benedictus has confirmed it is mineral water. Thank you, Benedictus. So mineral water. That's what I like about Greek water here. You get mineral water for free. I mean, not for free, but for very inexpensive. How's the Greek sandwich earlier? Amazing. The pita sandwich? Amazing. And what is the the Greek dessert with the tri word? How do I pronounce it again, everyone? Let me know. Wonder if you already did a bench review in Greece. Yeah, one of the highest rated benches in all of Greece has been Santorini. Well, what was the score? 9.7? Probably one of the highest. It was very close to being perfect. It just had no shade. I mean that names don't have plurals. There isn't a word like Marias or Panagiotis or Arioles. <laughs> Says Panagiotis. So now a Panagiotai? <laughs> Hey, Chris says, Triagono, thank you so much. Triagono is like a another kind of phyllo dough pastry, flaky, stuffed with cream, but made into a cone and stuffed with cream. And the pastry itself, I think, is, is drizzled in honey. Uh, so it has a, a very beautiful sweetness to it. I had a Greek neighbor named Piscali, and they called him Peter in English. Yeah, it sometimes happens in, in, in with Greek Americans. Their names are English five. So I have not in, in America I have not met a Panajotis. I've met Peters. I have not met anyone Panajotis. I have not met a Vesalios in in uh, America. Oh. Marias I have met. Okay, I can't drink this coffee. This is a crazy amount of coffee. It was really good. I'm gonna give it to the birds. I think maybe Pericles, the protesting pigeon, might enjoy it. Uh, Maria asked me to describe the coffee in poetry. I'll do my best, Maria. Usually I ha it has to come to me. Usually it's a process of, of, of divine inspiration that rushes to me when I have a beautiful bite into food and then I can uh, drive poetry, birth poetry from my soul, birth it into the world. That has to, has to happen uh, naturally, but I'll do my best. Lisa says, are you farsighted? Uh, the one that I can't see far away. Yes, I'm, I'm that one. I'm not the close one. Mm. If the rivers of milk and honey had a sewage system, and that sewage system was divinely 
blessed by Aphrodite herself, this would be its result. Ah, yes. <laughs> that was the best I could do. <laughs> it is a godly sewage. That's how it tastes like. And a good one. In a good one. Very good one. <coughs> Wrong throat. Lisa says, I like your glasses. You look nice in them too. Thank you. <coughs> Alright, one more. One more place. Let's do it. Last place. You guys ready? I am packed to the brim. I'm about to meet up with an amazing uh, pair from that lives in Thessaloniki. They're expats here. And I also agreed to do food with them. So I need to walk for a few miles. But before I do, I gotta take you to at least one more place. Let's go. I got a haircut here in Thessaloniki. Alright, one more stop. The place I mentioned while walking here. There's only Oh my god, uh-oh. Eleni is now contesting Panagiotis's fun fact about no Greek conjugations for names. Good you have the free water, oh yes. You need it for, for, for Turk, for, oh so, sorry. I hope, I hope the Prime Minister did not hear that. For Greek coffee, you need it for Greek coffee. <laughs> 30 degrees Celsius in Denmark, just as warm as Greece as Hyde. Oh, Hyde! Wow, that is warm. Can't wait to go, Denmark. Someone was saying Dimitri, yeah, Dimitrios. Hey, we talked about him earlier. Um, it's funny here uh, seeing people <laughs> have an argument about Greek language or, or history or whatnot. I find that very amusing because look at my TikTok videos. They've been doing very well here in Greece. I've been getting a lot of views on TikTok and getting a lot of Greek viewers as well. But there's so much arguing in the comments arguing about everything, about names, about pronunciations, about origins of, of, uh, of uh, history, about myths, like there's an argument about everything in the, in the comment section about my videos. And they're not really about controversial subjects. They're like my, you know, like I might do a video on like Alexander Hamilton and you don't see the amount of arguing that I saw right now in Greek. On my on my videos, very fascinating. All right, let's go here. This was recommended to me by Panagiotis. Oh, Fufuto says, "Welcome to the Greek internet." Yeah, it's quite intense. Maria Mac enjoyed my poetry. Thank you so much. Eleni says, Oregon is what we do best. Okay, cool. That's what, that's what the movie made uh, a light of. All right, let's try this place. I'm not gonna sit down for service.
Kalispera. Yeah. Okay, but Yeah, so I have one of these, the real That's it. So this is the place we're uh, visiting. And let me find a place to settle down because I decided not to have it here uh, because I had to do table service, which I'm not too keen on right now at this moment. Ariel, have you watched uh, Black Widow on Disney Plus? Lisa, no. Um, I'll be very brief because I don't talk too much about movies here. But no, I haven't seen Black Widow. Okay, I am crazy full. I'm about to burst, but this was recommended to me by Banajotas and a few other Greeks. 
said that you must try this in Thessaloniki. And immediately, uh, admittedly, I tried this the very first night I was here, but I did not get to show it on video. So I got the chocolate brioche. There's like a brioche bun stuffed with chocolate and drizzled in chocolate. Let me know the Greek name for it. But this is usually served as an even larger cake, but this is more kind of the personal one. And it's huge, it's gigantic, truly gigantic. Like, and it's melty, the chocolate is soft, so I'm gonna get very dirty even holding this. But look, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> You eat, you eat dessert here, you're gonna get full. Yeah, I, I need like a small family to eat this with. I can't leave without seeing this. All right, let's, uh, let's bite into this for our final stop. You're gonna make a mess, says Jao. Yes, I will make a mess. My name, Susie, I will. The name, the Greek name for it is damn. <laughs> hey, says uh, Paul, right. But there has to be a Greek name. As I said, not personal serving, no. It's called chocolate brioche. And, but there's a name for it in uh, Greek, of Fokutos. Thank you so much, Elias, for the 10 euro super chat. I really appreciate you. But it all says, better start a family so I can share these things. <laughs> it's okay. I think that I think this town, this city is perfect for a family vlogger. So if you're one of those family vloggers that has like two kids, two or three kids, like Walter's World, if you've ever seen him, he's a very good uh, travel vlogger as a family. This is the best city. This is the best city. You're gonna This is hard to eat with a fork. Because I don't think this is meant to eat with a fork. I think this is meant to stuff your face and have your entire face filled with chocolate. Well, I'm doing not to look like I am the kid from the movie Matilda. Let me know if you know that reference. Why are there flowers over my head? Because I uh, just chose the first thing I could put my camera on. Whoa! Okay. Alright, let's try this out, then I'll show you the insides. Brioche bread with some and chocolate inside. Yeah. I have so much so much dopamine is rushing to my brain. If food were a drug, this would be it. Pure chocolate sugary goodness. That yeah, is a punch of sugar directly injected into your eyeballs. That's how it feels like. I feel like I just snorted a bunch of sugar look at <laughs> oh my god Ooh. oh I want to get dizzy from all this sugar I have a in I've had a my insulin levels are going off the charts here <laughs> use your hands says Sean no I will not use my hands otherwise I would look like I dug into a pot of uh, Greek coffee Here it is, here's the inside. Look at all that sugary goodness. There's more chocolate in the inside, oh yes. Look at that. Warning, it might, the camera might make it look smaller, but it is the size of my face. Cynthia says, walk it off later. I think I might need to do that. Don't drop it, says Terry. I might secretly want to, because it's so much. <laughs> it is really, really good. Uh, it is really good. 
I love brioche bra uh, buns. It has the chocolate is so so good. Very on the sweeter side, definitely. So it's not your like Mexican chocolate, which is a bit more bitter, more uh, less uh, mixed with sugar and milk. And I'm gonna take another bite, especially of the inside. So bear with me. There we go. Of the inside, and I love the chocolate inside here. It tastes like a chocolate cream, which you would buy in a jar in certain chocolate shops in Italy. Like Nutella. It's a Nutella, but made out of chocolate. But insanely sugary. It'll just make you skyrocket. That's really good, everyone. The chocolate brioche from this place, which I can't pronounce. I don't know how to read Greek. I'll show you the name one more time. If someone could write the Latin alphabet version of this. It goes well with tea. I asked for tea, they only had chamomile. They didn't have a mint tea. I'm gonna really need a good spearmint tea right now uh, in order to wash all this down. Maybe a few prunes. That's the place, 1948. So some very old school places here. Okay, so I'm gonna share this with like a small family along with the milk bag. I'm gonna find some small family to share it with and hopefully I can feed them for a few days uh, with all these treats. Terkenilis. Terkenilis. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in. Maria, Maria has given a great, great super chat from Canada. There's another different Maria. Um, Maria, thank you so much, Maria Mac. You're a true spirit of world explorer and wanderer. Love all your live videos. Thank you so much, Maria. Follow me on Instagram if you want to see more of the food items I've eaten and other small tips. And some of the TikTok videos are reposted on Instagram as well. And on TikTok, it's Ariel Vieira, at the Ariel Vieira. And if you really enjoy these videos, getting a bonus Thessaloniki video tomorrow, and a bonus Santorini video, you're gonna see Santorini during sunset in 360 video. And then you're going to see, um, you're gonna see a few others, maybe uh, one more Thessaloniki, follow you of the Byzantine ruins. Also, the super urbanists help support this show. And lastly, if you want to buy prints of the Greek photos, photos from Greece that you've seen on Instagram of Santorini, all these places, if you want to think about Santorini, posting them very soon here on urbanist.darkroom.tech. There you can buy prints. I have a bunch of prints of Mexico, New York, and Washington, DC. And very, very soon, Greece will be added to that. So you can buy some prints in any size that you would like, in any way you would like. They can hang up in your room, in your house, and think about Santorini sunsets. If you want to see a particular photo being featured, leave a comment on... Leave a comment on Instagram specifically, and let me know if you want to see that. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a great day, everyone. I am about to walk for 30, 40, 50 miles all the way to, to Athens to burn all of this food off, and I'll come back. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Calispera.